Welcome to the fight with Teddy Atlas presented by Dynamic Striking. I'm Ken Rideau, joined as always by boxing legend Teddy Atlas. We're here today in Lower Manhattan to record a fight plan for the Demetrius Andrade versus David Benavidez fight. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at MyBookie. MyBookie.ag. Use the promo code ATLAS for a 50% credit on your first deposit up to $1,000. MyBookie.ag. Check them out and gamble responsibly. Teddy, what are you looking for in this one? Talk about a contrast in styles. You ever been to a store and... They don't have the item you want. <laughs> You've been there, right? And so, you know, you go down the aisle, you look, and then you get the manager, and the manager takes you to another aisle, and it's no good. You still don't have the item you want. And, but then they say, wait, we just, we got something in another aisle that just came in. That's kind of like what's going on here, where you couldn't get, Benavides couldn't get the fight that, that he wants. As a matter of fact, when he asked about it in the store, I guess the manager would have said, well, go down to aisle C. Uh, but aisle C was empty. <laughs> aisle C was supposed to have items such as Canelo. <laughs> right on. And he couldn't, there's nothing there. So they wound up sending him to the aisle where he got Andre. And it wasn't exactly what he wanted, but... It's the only thing that they had in the store. And now we're going to see whether or not it's what we want. And the problem is that you just alluded to it, that you have a style that's an ugly style in Andre. Uh, and you have, of course, on the other side, you have Benavides, who's all action. But he wants guys that are also action. He don't yeah. mind that. He wants guys to engage him. I mean, that's where he's at his best. He's big, he's strong, he figures he's, he's going to out-engage anybody. But that's all they had. So we got to deal with that. So now what we got to do is we got to go into the warehouse, so to speak, and we got to figure out how you put this darn thing together. It's got a lot of moving parts. <laughs> you know, that, that's the problem. You, you get it, you get it, you say, okay, because Andre also was looking for a fight that could deliver a big payday, could deliver that, again, that signature fight for him. Did he get what he wanted? We don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to go into the back. And I hate things, even like grandkids, where you have to put it together. <laughs> Preach it to the choir. But we're going to have to put it together. Yep. Are you ready to go put it together? Let's do it. We're going to a lot of parts. I got my toolbox. I just, I just hope it doesn't need batteries. <laughs> Let's go. All right, Teddy, David Benavides, Demetrius Andrade. What does David Benavides have to do to take advantage of Andrade in his awkward style? You know what the right answer for that is? It's about what he has to not do. He has to not load up on one punch at a time, get frustrated, and just look for that knockout. But yeah, he's, he's the bigger guy, he's the stronger guy. But the other guy we talked about in the opening, he's got an ugly style, he's defensive-minded, he, he knows how to fight. I mean, he, he was an Olympian, he has all the pedigree and the amateurs, he's undefeated, he's, a, you know, he's been a world champion for a long time. Uh, this is a guy that, he doesn't have a style conducive to making good fights uh, or to making you look good. And part of it is because he controls range well, He's defensive-minded, he's cautious, he's, he's, he's responsible. And in his mind, he, I'm being responsible. It's a sweet science. Suppose they're not getting at it. I ain't letting you at me. Um, and he ain't going to take them any chances. So you have to really be aware of that style, of, of what his temperament is. And again, it's what not to do. You, you can't just go in there saying, I'm going to just hurt him. I'm going to just bang him out. No, there's a way to get to him. And the way to get to him is you better use that long jab you have. And you better lower the sights on it to maybe the chest rather than the head. So you don't jab. So at least you're hitting something. You're stabilizing them. You're keeping them in front of you. You're not getting frustrated where you're not falling into space. So, and I think feints will be important. Why? Because you find a guy who's going to control age. And that means he's going to step out on you. 
So if you can get them to step out erroneously, you know, prematurely at the wrong time, now instead of doing what he wants you to do, which is leave yourself open, now all of a sudden you can go track him down without leaving yourself open, without falling into, you know, that hole mm -hmm. that he's trying to create. So, so Andrade, Andrade is, uh, Andrade is uh, southpaw, you'll be Andrade. And is it Andrade or Andrade? I'd Andrade. say Andrade. Andrade, all right, no problem. When they say tomato, you say tomato. That's exactly right. Uh, whatever. You guys are used to this. I heard you from watching the podcast. <laughs> you know, I'm not Orson Welles, all right? <laughs> I'm Teddy Atlas. I know a little bit about boxing. As far as the rest of the stuff, I'll leave it up to him. <laughs> Benavides, who I'm going to play right now. I got that pronunciation perfect. He's got a long jab, so does Andrade. But the key here is use the jab to the chest, not to the head, just so you don't go chasing him. You don't get yourself out of position. And use feints because you know he's not going to stand with you. Andrade, he's going to look to get out and create problems for you, create space where you might fall into that space. So using the jam to the chest when you're out here, bang, 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 just to stabilize him, but also face to get him to step back too soon. Give him a little face. Ah, see, I didn't fall in. I go, look, get him to move back, bang, bang, bang. And then you go after him and you finish to the body again because the body is gonna be easier to hit than the head. And if you go to the body, it's kind of like, and you understand that in the, in the investment world, it's kind of like putting your money into CDs. <laughs> you're, you'll get interest. Yep. It'll pay you off in time. You go to the body, you get interest. It pays off in time. Compounding interest for all the finance guys. Exactly, and, and, and we wanna, and it take away the legs. And if we can take your legs away, well, you, you got good legs, you run marathons, but if we can take Andrade's legs away, he's gonna be easier to hit, simply put. So, again, a little faint, get him to go, and then bam, 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 close the gap, finish with the right hand to the body. And if you do that, well, your bank account will get bigger. All right, Teddy, what else can Benavidez do to take advantage of Andrade? Again, if they watched the film the way I did, they would see that Andrade, he throws two different kinds of jabs. He had thrown a conventional jab. See, part of his problem is he's awkward, he's not conventional. Uh, and that gives you a lot of problems. But he does throw from uh, a, a conventional place, you know, where it's in chamber from the South Pole position. But then he goes to another place, less conventional, where he drops it and he's flicking it up. Kind of like uh, the great Larry Holmes. Uh, years ago, uh, one of the great champs in heavyweight history. And when he's doing that, see, the problem with that is before it actually gets, you know, to the place where it can be delivered, there's probably a tenth of a second. Tenths of a seconds in my business, in boxing, they can be, uh, they can be hours. <laughs> they can be eternity. They can be a lifetime of mistakes, quite frankly. By the time it gets up there, you have a chance to do something before it's there. And that's what I'm gonna bargain on. So, you're gonna be, you're, you're gonna be Andrade, he drops his hand down here, and he's looking to flick it up. And Benavides, Benavides, I think before he gets there, if he's noticed this, I've noticed that Benavides has a really snappy left hook. He really does, where, where pop, he, he, where, pop, he, he just pops it, and it's, he does it really quick. And I think if his feet can be up to par with his hand speed, and he does have good hand speed, they both do, but better feet is the bigger guy, the stronger guy. You, you might not expect him to have comparable hand speed, yeah. but, he, but he does. So again, before that gets up, go ahead, just go through, before it comes up all the way up, what I think he can do is maybe he can pop, just know that tendency and pop, close the gap real quick. I don't like to lead with left hooks in front of a guy, but this isn't leading, this is timing. This is knowing that there's an opportunity there to get to him before it gets to a place that can be danger to you and, pop, and to just close the gap. And I have an option. Options are good, you like options? Love them. Option where- And they're free. Yeah, come over here a little bit. I have an option where 
being that he's a southpaw, you want to stay away from the left hand. You want to move a little bit to the left as the orthodox fighter. And if you go over here, you can get an angle for the jab. That's a bam, bam. That's really a good angle where you could just out jam him. And you could catch him <clears throat> again with that low right hand, lead hand, where you just get that angle, bang. And I'll give you something else. You can create a hybrid, a hybrid jab hook where it's coming right from here, bang. Where it's the power of a hook disguised as a jab. Where you get that angle a little bit here, bang. And before he gets that hand up, you can catch him. And if you can do that, well, huh, you're the champ again. You say the champ and, and then you wait like I was talking about in the opening. You wait for them to get the, <laughs> that aisle opened up in the stool where you've got something actually in aisle C. <laughs> That's for sure. What's in aisle C? The champ, Canelo. The money guy. I, I, I would say the money guy. They're all champs. The money guy. All right, Teddy, we talked about what uh, Benavidez is going to look to do to exploit Andrade. What can Andrade do to get the jump on Benavidez? Oh, he's going to look to live on the outside. Again, he better know what not to do. He can't stand in front of a bigger, stronger guy close on the inside. If he does, he can't do it too long. Uh, you do it at your own peril. <laughs> and because not only is he a big, strong guy, but if he just put on the inside, he'll move his hands. I mean, he, he will work. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to do is you want to control the outside, but it's not as easy done as it is said because he's aggressive. He's going to be coming. So I guess what I'm getting at is you got to slow him down. You got to slow him down. You got to hit him with some kind of purposeful punch to just gain his respect. Slow him down a little bit. Because I don't know how respectful he's going to be as far as, you know, and, and he'd be making a mistake if he's not respectful of Andrade because he knows how to fight. He's, he's good defensively. He can walk into traps and he can punch on his own a little bit. Uh -huh. So uh, you, 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 shouldn't, you shouldn't take anyone lightly in this business. But if Benavides isn't hit with something of some kind of something substantial or something at least effective enough to make him think, then he's just, the pressure's never gonna stop. And he, it's gonna be hard to box on the outside when, when he's there and relentlessly. So you wanna slow him down. And I saw an opportunity where you're, you're gonna be in orthodox position as, as Benavides now. I'll be in a southpaw position, obviously, as Andrade. Where Benavides, sometimes when you throw the jab at him, he puts the earmuffs on. Yeah, and he just goes into that pickable where he, he's not moving, he's right there stationary, and that gives you an opportunity to do what I talked about, where Andrade maybe can put a significant punch on him. So he's got long arms, Andrade. He wants to live on the outside, stay on the outside, throw that stiff jab, bang, get him to cover up like that, bang, and then bang, up the middle with a left uppercut from the southpaw position, and maybe you blind him, with a, bang, Oh, you didn't see a color, right? Because the, the jab blinded you. Or you have a choice. Right, go over here. Fight. And bring it right up there. But just an opportunity. Put them in the earmuffs. And then uh, split the guard with an uppercut. And if you do that, you slow them down enough where then you can go back to boxing. And maybe actually the guy will leave you alone a little bit. <laughs> you know? I doubt it. <laughs> no, with this guy. All right, Teddy, aside from catching Benavidez when he puts the earmuffs on, what else can Andrade do to take advantage of Benavidez? Well, I noticed again, I went to the laboratory, you know, which is the film room, right? And I looked at the film, broke it down. And, yeah, we don't want to be, we, if, if you with Andrade, you don't want to be on the inside world. But there's going to come a time. This is boxing. This is life. This is real. There's going to come, and, and we give you real here. We, we don't give you just what you want to hear or what's convenient for the moment. No, what, what you might not even expect to hear sometimes. But there's going to have to be a moment that he's going to be inside to, to win this fight. You know, he doesn't want to live there. He wants to live on the outside to give himself the best chance to win. But there'll be a moment, and 
during that moment will be a moment to win the fight. And, and what I mean by that is when Andrade has to the southpaw, when they're on the inside, Benavides, for his power, for his aggression, everything else, I notice a couple of, well, a couple of mistakes where he gets squared up parallel with his feet. Uh, really, I mean, really parallel. And when you do that, you got no balance. And you give it a lot of target. You, you just are, you give it a lot of surface. And one other thing, he's got, Benavides has a terrific left hook to the liver. And he's gonna to look to use that, I'm sure, to go to the body. He'd be crazy if he didn't. And, but there's a problem. When you throw it, I always teach, when you throw that punch, and I'm going into the southpaw position as I should for Andrade, when you go to throw that punch, you should go into a defensive position first to make sure that you're not there to get hit with the right hand. Because the other guy does have hands. He can, I hate that about boxing, that the other guy actually hits back. <laughs> that, that could be a problem. So that's usually when people's career goes off track. Yeah, exactly. So really the right thing to do is you don't throw that left hook to the body unless you're over there. Now you're okay to throw it and you can throw it from there. But I noticed that he doesn't sometimes that he squares up, and that's probably part of his problem, quite frankly. He gets squared up and he'll throw it right there in front. And guess what? That might be the moment where right there as he throws, he's exposed, bang, beat him with a right hook. Now, if he was orthodox, he'd beat him with the straight right hand, but he's not, he's a southpaw. So as he goes, bang, bang, just catch him with a short little hook. And if you do that right, he might not even see it because he'd be focusing on the target there and he might not even see it. And if you can do that, well, you can do what you want to do. You can stun him and definitely earn his respect as we talked about earlier where he can't dominate you in one place. And that'll give you a chance to get back outside where obviously you wanna, for the most part, you wanna earn your living. So with all that being said, considering everything we've discussed, Benavidez minus 375, yeah, that's funny. Andrade plus 275. Once again, for our friends at my bookie, if you're gonna bet on the fight, please go to mybookie.ag. Use the promo code Atlas for 50% credit on your first deposit up to thousand dollars. Minus 375 on Benavidez, plus minus 375 or plus 275 on Andrade. What do you like? I think I'm gonna lay, but I'm with you. Yeah, I think I'm gonna lay, but. Look, uh, it's not minus 600, it's minus, and then look, it still would, but I think I'll lay it, but uh, not without, again, I used the word earlier, not without peril. You know, uh, shop up beware, shop up beware. <laughs> Be because, you know, the, this, is, this is Andre, he's on the V. He hasn't learned how to lose yet either. That's a good point. And, you know, uh, he's, he's been a champion a long time. You know, everyone gives him no chance. He doesn't, but except him. Yeah and his father who trades him. So uh, I wouldn't go crazy, but I'd like at the end of the day, I figure even if it gets ugly, uh, even if it gets in quicksand a little bit with that the defensive cautious style that Andre could have sometimes, I think at the end of the day that he'll find a way, he being Benavides, uh, to use his strength, to use his power. Uh, to get to him. And what do we got? What else do we read? Certainly an intriguing matchup with the contrast in styles. Minus, I'm oh, sorry, over under. Ten and a half rounds, minus 160 on the over, plus 120 on the under. Minus 160 on the over? Yep. Yeah, it's a defensive fighter. They figure it's going to go rounds. And they figure maybe he's just going to survive at some point. I think that might be a better way to get some exposure to on to Benavidez without having to lay so much wood because there's a good chance if Benavidez is the winner that he catches him a shot because the other guy, like you said, is going to stand on the outside box. So it's minus 160 for the over. Yeah, plus 120 on the under. Yeah, but they're not giving you that much. Eh? Man, you guys aren't the most, you know, giving guys in the world, you bookmakers. <laughs> just so you know. I think I'm this thing figured out pretty good. Yeah, you guys <laughs> kind of do know your business. Uh, pretty much, um, I, I probably, I probably go the opposite way you were hinting towards, and I get it, but I probably lay it and think it's gonna, it's gonna go rounds, mm -hmm. uh, because again, uh, even though he's the biggest, stronger guy, Benavides, uh, Andre uh, does have a pedigree. Yep. He, he, you know, he has a lot out to lose. He's been a champion. He, he was an Olympian. 
you know, he, he knows how to survive. Um, I'm, I'm going to say that he's, at the end of the day, he will survive, you know. He's just been so inactive. I mean, I can't even remember the last time he had a fight. And certainly the last time he's had a competitive fight. And this, this is where his ship has finally come in. Yeah. For, you know, a big fight. Yeah, this but, is a big one. But you got to give him credit. It took him long enough. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give him credit that he, he finally got in there. You know, he's like, let me, let me test the deep end. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely testing the deep end. Yeah, but uh, I, think, I think at the end of the day, I, I get it. I'd be with you if they were giving me a little bit more on the under. Yeah. Just give me a little more, and then I'm going to go with what we talked about, where I'm going to say, okay, better be as close to the body. You know, he keeps that pressure on. He breaks him down because that's what he'll look to do, and he stops him uh, where I can cash in. Yeah. But are you only giving me 20 bucks back? <laughs> nah. Very intriguing fight, like I said. We haven't just haven't seen Andrade in there with someone of this pedigree. And to see these two styles contrasting in the ring is going to be incredibly entertaining. Check out the fight. If you're going to bet, please go to mybookie.ag. Again, use the promo code ATLAS. And we'll see you Tuesday with a breakdown of all the action. Good luck to everyone and good luck to the fighters.